the wind and the waves for two weeks. Our longest passage had begun. Weather routing is only good so far out, so we were truly sailing into the unknown. We took down the St. Martin flag and sailed into international waters of the Atlantic, wondering how we would all handle the endless horizons ahead of us. Only time would tell, but the first day we took off in the beautiful sunshine with smiles on our faces. Hey everyone, we're Sailing Sweet Ruka. I'm Kate, this is Curtis, and Roxy the dog. And we're here to sail around the world via Cape Horn and the Cape of Good Hope. We like to take the sea less traveled and are ready for some serious offshore sailing. So come along for the ride and click subscribe. We are finally sailing. We're under full sail headed towards the Azores. We're making good speed. Right now about seven and a half to eight knots at a heading of about 62 degrees, which is right on the rum line for the Azores. We'll most likely be sailing this way for at least a day and a half or so, maybe a little bit more, before the wind gets a little light and fluky and we're gonna head a little bit north. At least that's the forecast for now. So we'll see how this goes. But right now, this is just great sunny champagne sailing in the Caribbean and we're happy to be aboard. <laughs> we noticed the rail was buried in the water a bit too much, so we eased the sails a bit to help level her out and make forward progress and prevent leeway slide. are sleeping so let's go look outside. It is gorgeous out. Sorry about the wind noise. It's gonna happen right now. There's not a whole lot around. It's gonna be a whole lot of nothing for a whole lot of days. But it's really pretty. The water is just epically blue. It doesn't get any bluer. Perfect wind speed for cruising sailing like this. Just enough to push us along at a decent clip but not enough to heal us over and make things out of control. So life is good. So there's St. Martin, way back there. Can't see it anymore. We've seen uh, one ship and a sailboat and a tide and current buoy. Other than that, a lot of sargasso, and water and clouds. I just can't get over the color of the blue. It's just amazing. It's just crystal, crystal clear. You can probably easily see down 100 feet. You can probably tell that our Genoa is looking a bit on the well-used side. However, we absolutely love the cut of the sail and it reefs really well in heavy air. We knew she had enough in her to make it across the Atlantic. Hello friends at home, we are on our way to the Azores. As you can tell, it's pretty hot down here. It's a good Caribbean day with some good sunshine and 80 plus degrees, but we're sailing and ripping along here. As you can tell, the boat is moving around quite a bit, so hope you don't get too seasick, but I'm going to take you for an offshore ready boat tour. The boat is in full offshore mode. We're actually under sail 
So I'm gonna give you guys at home an idea of what it looks like on the boat while we're actually sailing. Let's do this. All right, probably the most important area of the boat we have right here, for me at least, is the navigation area. I'll zoom in here on a couple of different things, but we've got our laptop, which is down here. This is running Expedition Sailing Software, which allows us to download our grids and do weather routing. Up here, we've got our link to our B&G radar and MFD, which is also mirrored upstairs on deck. This is through an iPad. And then we've got some extra handhelds. We've got an SSB, yada, yada, all the comms gear, satellite, all the kind of stuff that you need. Not a bad little setup. Next most important part of the boat while we're sailing down here is where we sleep. You can take a look back here. This is our aft cabin. It's on the starboard side of the boat. And it's a really, really comfortable area to sleep while we're underway. So that's where we build our little nest and we hang out when we're off shift. Next up, we've got the galley. Let's wander over here. Bear with me, we're at about a 15 degree heel right now. And we're and the boat's moving along in some, probably about six foot waves. We've got our stove, propane stove. We do all of our cooking on that. We've got a freezer over here. We've got our refrigerator right in here. When we are healing this much on this board, we do get a little water that comes into the bottom of our sink here through our through hole. This kind of is what it is. Now that we've got the three most important parts of the interior of the boat. Let's go do a quick tour of the rest of it, and then we'll go upstairs and see what we've got going on that makes the boat different from our inshore mode into our offshore or ocean sailing mode. Come on. We do have a lee cloth that goes up right here, and we put this up from time to time, if need be, when we're sailing. And uh, this allows someone to sleep in this bunk when we're on this board. We do also have some room over here on the other side of the boat. We've got a pillow set up here. It's a really nice place to uh, lay in the bunk. I'll show you guys how it looks here. Oh yeah, wonderful little spot here. At least when the sun's not in our eyes. While I'm here, let's show you. We've got a whole bag full of goodies. We call that our junk food section. You just need a quick snack. You need to grab something. We're not feeling good enough to cook or anything like that. It's kind of our grab and go uh, junk food aisle. It works for us and it gets the job done. We've got three extra head sails stored down here right next to our table. It locks in real nicely here. They don't move around and we can grab them and get them up on the, on the deck if we need them. We've got a staysail here, which is a full size inner four stay staysail that hangs on. And then we've got a number three jib, which goes up on our roller furling slot. Ahead of that, we've got our G3 cruising spinnaker. We also have a, another spinnaker, which we keep tucked away which is a big uh, blue masthead runner. More of a racing sail than a cruising sail, but we can use it if we want to. All right, another important part of the boat is our engine, and it's located right down here underneath these stairs. We do have two service hatches on the sides, which we can actually access the engine pretty well to be able to maintain it underway if need be. All right, right here is our aft head, and this is what we use when we're underway most of the time. It also holds our life jackets, and some emergency equipment. Back here, you're not gonna be able to see much, but we call this our garage. All right, let's creep out of there. Yeah, that's our garage back there, and uh, we'll show you, we'll cut in a shot here of it. Uh, but really, it just holds some extra stuff. It's got our scooby gear, water maker, and uh, a whole bunch of spare parts. Let's get out of the cabin of the boat and go look outside, because it is beautiful. You can see behind me, we're pretty much right on course to the Azores for our transatlantic, moving right along. So what's different up here between inshore and offshore? You guys are gonna have to bear with a little bit of wind noise. I don't have a wind mic on here right now. We've got autopilot, he's steering right now. We've got a B&G NAC3 autopilot. He can steer in wind mode or compass mode and a whole lot of other things. He's got the Precision 9 compass, which actually steers a pretty darn good course. You can see over here, we've got our life raft and we've got our EPIRB. Both of those are auto deploy capable. Basically, if they go in underneath about 12 feet of water, they'll release from the boat automatically. Hopefully that never happens. Knock on some wood. Everything back here in the cockpit is pretty much the same inshore versus offshore. You can see Kate's in a really nice, comfortable position right here. That's also one of the best spots in the cockpit to sleep while you're going. You can see that we have our inflatable rib stuck down here to the bow. He gets tied on up here. And the motor goes on the lifeline right behind me over there. We don't want him on the davits in case a big wave were to come and tear him away. Next thing you notice, we've got our anchor secured and double tied down. That way our anchor can never come loose 
from the foredeck. You can also see that we've got an inner fore stay, which is just a little bit back from the, the actual fore stay itself. That allows us to hang on that staysail that we have rolled up downstairs I showed you. Our mast is carbon fiber. It's made from hull spars, and we have BSA rod rigging. I'm going to butt in here now for sake of the wind noise. We have a boom brake that came with the boat, which slows down the boom during jibes, making it a bit safer for the rig. We sometimes keep our movable solar panel out on the deck. It's a flexible panel that we've set up so that we can move it to where the sun is if we need a little extra charge while sailing or at anchor. You can also see that the door aids are faced away from the waves. They act as great vents to let in fresh air, but they can also act as water catchers, so we turn them away from the water to keep the interior nice and dry. We also have safety items such as the life sling, mom, short for man overboard module, and as previously mentioned, our four person life draft and EPIRB. These are all in case of extreme emergency or man overboard. The two poles on the stern that came from the previous owner are the wind generator used to charge our batteries, as well as our radar pole, which allows us to set alarms at various distances as an extra lookout. To the pedestal, we added a rock USB charger so that we can charge the iPad and bring out our Navionics charts when we need extra navigation inshore. We also added two buttons to control the windlass and anchor from the pedestal as a redundant system from the buttons on the bow. Lastly, one of the important things we looked for when choosing a boat was the swim platform. This helps us when we're getting on and off the boat, especially with the dog, but also acts as a great platform for when we want to reel in a fish. Maybe we'll give it a try a little on later. Of course, there are many other topics to cover, but I hope this offshore boat tour gave you some insight to our boat setup. everyone, it's the end of day one on our Atlantic crossing on Sweet Ruka, and I'm feeling pretty good. I am trying out some sea sickness pills that everyone suggested, the Sturgeron. Um, I'm feeling pretty good. I cooked a meal downstairs today. We had uh, arepas with eggs and cheese, and pretty simple, but I was excited to cook us a hot meal on our first night. The wind was started around 16 to 18 at about... I don't know, 50 degrees uh, apparent wind, sailing at about 63 degrees uh, as our heading. Roxy's chilling out, she ate breakfast and dinner and she's drinking water and she got some treats so she's happy. But there's about a half moon out so uh, hopefully we can get some moonlight tonight although there are some clouds around but we really have enjoyed our first day across the Atlantic. Our buddies from Kariku on a catamaran called Slug Hunter also left this morning, maybe about an hour and a half before us. We set sail maybe like two hours into our trip. We decided to call him on the radio and see if we were in range to reach him. And we got to chat with him for a little bit before we sort of head out into the ocean uh, on our own paths. And we got to say good luck and fair winds and following seas. So that was pretty cool also. It's not the same as an ARC rally, but there's some level of comfort and enjoyment being able to chat with someone experiencing something very similar to you while out in the middle of the sea. Our friend John had left from St. Martin a few hours before us, and while we were still in range, we called him up on the radio. This would be our last verbal contact with him before reaching Horta. We would then be communicating via satellite phone for the remainder of the trip. Hello, uh, Anguilla, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, uh... Yeah, no worries, copy that. Uh, we're a little bit more north-northeast. Uh, right now, we're headed about 60 degrees magnetic, uh, running about eight knots. We're running 025 crew, and we're sitting on five and a half knots, seven. 
Okay, cool. Copy that, man. Uh, sounds like everything's good and, and you're ripping. I'll stay in touch with email. We might go out of, out of distance here soon. Fantastic. Good to speak to you. Fair wind. Speak to you soon. Out. Alright, fair wind. Safe travels. Out. Sorry, can't get back to one six. Sweet Rupa one six. That's it for day one. Spirits are high. Stomachs are not queasy. <laughs> and... Here's the two more weeks. <laughs> First day was easy going and pretty uneventful. The sailing was straightforward and enjoyable as we averaged a good seven and a half knots just off the breeze. The sun was out and although it was hot, we knew we'd be climbing latitudes and feeling the chill pretty soon. Stay tuned for more action. Behind me we've got two squalls, one on each side of us, and we don't want to find ourselves in a dangerous situation. Maybe they'll go right down the sides of us or they might come at us, so we're, we're just keeping a, a close eye.